the book of John chapter 9, Holy Spirit help us here. And I want us to stand up for the reading of the word. We read verse 1, verse 2, and we jump, we go to verse 6, then we go to verse 6, 7, 8, then 9, then it's done. So it's 2, it's 1, 2, we jump 3, 4, 5, we go to 6, 7, 8, 9. Are we ready? Are we ready? One, two, three. God bless his way. Let's read. And as Jesus passed by, uh -huh. he saw a man which was blind from his birth. Uh -huh. And his disciples asked him, uh -huh. saying, uh -huh. Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? When he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground and made clay of the spittle, and he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay, and said unto him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam, which is by interpretation sent. He went his way therefore, and washed and came seeing. Then neighbors therefore, and they which before had seen him that he was blind, said, Is not this he that sat and begged? Some said, This is he. Others said, He is like him. But he said, I am he. I am he. While it's your standing, Father, in the name of Jesus, this is your word, Holy Spirit. We thank you for being part and parcel of this great meeting. We know that this was predestined. Somebody's life under the influence of my voice will never be the same on this very day. And I thank you for using me as your vessel of honor. Heavenly Father, may you speak through my lips, think through my mind. As I decrease, may you increase. As I disappear, may you appear. I pray that these people will see you and will hear you, not apostle means in Jesus' name. Somebody say amen. Amen. Be seated in the wonderful presence of God. I'm just going to, you know, take my time a little bit so that I take you somewhere. Are you ready to go somewhere? Oh, yes, Major. We read about a man who was blind and he is not the first man to be healed in the Bible or the first person to receive sight from the Bible. And as a matter of fact, in the book of John, he is not the first man to receive a miracle. Uh, we read about two things that happened. We read about a man who was sitting next to a pool of Bethesda, and Jesus spoke to him, and the man received his healing and picked up his mat and left Jesus. And now we are reading in chapter 9 that there is a man who is blind, born blind, and Jesus spits on the ground, takes mud, anoints the eyes of the blind man, and he gives the man instruction. He says, go and wash your eyes by the pool of Siloam. And the man does exactly what Jesus told him. And the Bible says immediately he received his sight back. And as he went back, people were wondering, is this the same man that we actually knew before? Others, they said, he looks like him. And others say, no, it's not him. You're not hearing what I just said. After he went to wash as Jesus told him, when he came back, people that knew him, they said, is this not the beggar? Is this not the blind man? And others said, he is the one. And others said, he looks like him. And he says, I am he. I will repeat what I just said. After he was given an instruction, he went to wash his eyes by the pool. When he came back, the people that knew him, the people that fed him, the people that grew up with him, oh, yes. could not recognize him. Listen to this. And others, not that they could not recognize him. They never wanted to recognize him because they knew the guy depended on them. So if the guy now had received sight, uh, the power that they used to have on the guy, they won't have anymore. Oh, yes. He won't need anybody to dress him, but he will dress himself. Oh, yes. He won't need anybody to drive him, but he will drive himself. 
Uh, my keyboardist is not in a church here today. But listen to me. The Bible says, as he went back, I'm here for 13 people. Oh, yes. As he went back, the people who knew him said, it's him. Others said, no, 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 it's not him. Others said, it looks like him. But I love what he's saying at the end. He says, I am one more time, say, I am here. I am here. I want you to write this down when it comes to spiritual metrics. Now I'm about to work the text like I was there when it was written. Um, before we get to spiritual metrics, we need to understand what a matrix is. And if you are here to learn, of course, I will take this slow so that you get to write this one down. You know, there are many definitions when it comes to metrics. But there is actually one definition when it comes to spiritual metrics. You know, biology defines metrics the way it wants to define metrics. Geography, it defines metrics in a different way. And also mathematics describes uh, 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 metrics in a different way. But now an English dictionary, when it defines metrics, pronounced as matrix. Mm, are you here? Are you here? I'm about to take you to the University of New Life, so open your ears. So the English dictionary, it puts metrics as a social. If you're writing, you better write that one down so that when I move, you get to, uh, you know, hear me well, well. Social, cultural, or political environment in which something develops. I will repeat what I just said. I wish I had people with ears here. It's actually a cultural, social, political environment. Meaning any environment that suits you as a human being, whether it's cultural, whether it's social, whether it's political, in which something develops. Meaning if I take something into the matrix, it's bound to develop. Either negative or positive. But as long as it enters metrics, it's bound to develop. So nothing enters the metrics and remain the same. It either it goes up or it goes down. But the fact that it has entered the metrics, I'm coming, I'm coming. So nothing enters the metrics and remain the same. Because it's a cultural, social, or political environment in which something develops. Hala metrics. metrics. So when we talk about spiritual metrics now, we are talking about a spiritual system that manipulates the physical system. You are writing, and I have not yet started. I'm coming. Follow me. Fasten your seatbelt. It's going to be heavy. No turbulence is here, but it's going to be heavy. So we are talking about a spiritual what? System. Talk back to me. We are talking about what? Spiritual system. That manipulates what? The physical system. Meaning we have a spiritual system here, and we have a physical system here. So this physical system here is being manipulated by the spiritual system. Yet the word matrix on its own is an environment in which something Develops. If you are ready, say, I'm ready, Major. I'm ready, Major. Bring it on. When, when coming to my house, so that you understand what a matrix is, coming to my house, I have a son. Uh, his name is MJ, you know. And he's growing. And as much as he's growing, what you don't understand is, he is not growing because he's supposed to grow. He is growing because he's under a matrix. Where he is in my house... He is growing because in my house there is a matrix. Love is part and parcel of the matrix. Blankets is part and parcel of the matrix. Food is part and parcel of the matrix. Ah. So he might not know that he is growing because of a matrix. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. He is developing not because he is developing, but he is developing because there is a certain matrix that is available in my house. 
Right now, there are children that are born right same date, same time as MJ was born. But they are not growing and they are not as healthy as MJ. Why? The difference is not that God loves MJ more than any other child, but the difference is uh, the matrix. I'm coming. I'm coming. I know. I know you, 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 you thought matrix, matrix. I'm coming. Break it down, Major. So when we talk about matrix, it is a place where when you tap into Everything about you changes. I did not say some of the things changes. When you enter into matrix, everything about you changes. Now watch this. <laughs> I'm about to work something now. This guy here, he is blind and he has been blind and he was born blind. And I want you to understand that when he meets Jesus, Jesus says unto him, go and wash your eyes by the pool of Siloam. And what you don't understand is, the pool of Siloam, can I work something out here? Aha, uh -huh, I think, I think, I think here it really, it really work, work really good. So the pool of Siloam, which is actually translated sand, uh, and the word sand there is actually the word Shiloah. And the word Shiloah, they used it in the book of Jeremiah, they used to collect or rather draw water that they poured on the altar. So the pool of Siloam is the same place in the olden times, in the Old Testament. They would draw water, the priests, and they would put it right on the altar of God. Are you listening? I, I don't know if you know all about that, but if you don't know, it's, it's useless because you want to catch a revelation. So that speaks to say it is not a new thing. When it comes to Jesus, understanding what the pool of Siloam is. So people here will go in there and bath and say, I had a miracle. So this blind man meets Jesus. But I want you to understand that it was not his first time to go to the pool of Siloam. He has been there for a long time. And as much as he has been there for a long time, we don't hear anything about this man being healed. Until he meets Jesus. And when he meets Jesus, listen to what Jesus says. Jesus doesn't say anything new. He says, go and wash by the pool of Siloam. And to show that this guy knew where the pool was, he did not ask which pool or where is the pool of Siloam. Meaning this guy knew exactly where the pool was. And he went straight there. It tells us that normally it was something that he was used to. But now when he gets into the pool, Something extraordinary takes place. And the Bible tells us that the man now received sight. And the question will be, did he receive sight because of the pool? Did he receive sight because Jesus spoke? What materialized this miracle? Remember, spiritual matrix. The spiritual matrix is manipulating the physical. The spiritual system manipulating the physical system. Uh, come on, come on, come on, come on. Bring so we have the spiritual here manipulating, influencing the physical. So now this man here, he is healed. And, uh, and the question will be, is he healed because of the pool? Is he healed because of the mud on his face? Is he healed because Jesus spoke? But I want you to understand, he is not healed because of the mud on the face. He is not healed because of the pool. He is not healed because Jesus spoke. Because Jesus would have spoken. And the man would have decided, let me go to the pool of Bethesda. Ah. Bring it on. Break it down, Major. So, the man was healed. Not because of the pool. Because he used to wash there. But I want you to understand right now, that when Jesus said, go and wash, it was not the go and wash, the instruction that healed the man. But when Jesus showed up, he carries a certain atmosphere of the matrix. Ah. Can I go just a little bit deeper here? Go deeper, Major. A matrix is something that you can move with. It's something that is everywhere. Meaning a matrix does not have a geographical area and say this is the world and this is the matrix. The matrix can move with somebody. The matrix can be a person. Are you listening to me? Remember the woman with an issue of blood. 
A lot of people came around Jesus, nothing happened. But when she touched Jesus, she understood that as I touch this man, I'm entering into another world. Oh my God, oh my God. Listen to me. Where the spiritual will manipulate my situation. So this man here, he is blind. So he is not healed because he was supposed to be healed. He is healed because Jesus carries a certain atmosphere. He carries a certain level of the metrics that when he gets around him, the healing of the guy was available. So the rest of the stuff, it was more of follow the instruction to make this possible. Somebody had the metrics. The metrics. What is the metrics, Apostle? The metrics is when you get into another world where you were not able before, but when you get there, you begin to develop. Let, let me just give you another practical example so that you understand these things. If you have watched a movie called The Matrix, because I'm still coming anyway, there is a guy called Neo. How many of you know the movie? Oh, that's better. I'm preaching to people who watch movies, which is good. There is a guy called Neo. And Neo is the main man. Let me not focus on anybody who's there. This guy is a normal guy. He's just normal like everybody. And later on, they introduce the guy to the Matrix. The guy never fought anybody before. The guy never argued with anybody before. But when he gets into the Matrix, automatically, they plug him. When they plug him, he appears into another world. And I want you to understand that the world is, he is sleeping this side. He is alive somewhere. And whatever happens that side, not where he's sleeping. Whatever happens that side affects where he's sleeping. So when they beat him on the other side, he bleeds on the other side. So where he is, where he's sleeping, it does not matter how you beat him. It does not affect the matrix. But the matrix affects the physical world. Uh, Bring it on, daddy. I'm still coming. Oh, yes, mate. So it does not matter what you do to the guy. The guy never fought anybody. The guy never learned Kung Fu. But when he was introduced to the Matrix, we see the same guy. He gets into a, 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 a Kung Fu place like this the first time he fought mafias. And when he gets there, he does not know how to fight. Then mafia says to the guy who was operating, operator, activate Kung Fu. And they just press boom. And Kung Fu was registered in Neo. Neo never fight, fought anybody. He does not know Kung Fu. But because he was in the Matrix, he began to develop some Kung Fu. I wish, I wish, I wish, I wish. Oh, yes, Major. Bring it on. Say with I me, Matrix. Matrix. So now, he does not know how to fight. But when he gets there, he begins to uh, just saying, Operator, activate Kung Fu. And boom, Kung Fu is there. And the guy is fighting. And before you know it, the guy never shot any gun. And right now, they are shooting him. He's, he manages to dodge his bullets. Why? In reality, this guy never dodged any bullets. But when he tapped into the metrics, ay, 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 ay. there was some development that happened in the system of this guy. Oh, yes. I, I don't know who I'm here to talk to. But I know I'm coming, I'm coming. Be seated, please. He's a normal guy. But when he gets into the matrix, and to show you that this is spiritual, when he gets into the matrix, they are telling him he's the one. And he wants to know, how am I the one? They say only the oracle will tell you. And he gets to the oracle, and the oracle say, yeah, I've been waiting for you for a long time because there is a prophecy. Oh, yes, mate. Say the matrix. Metrics. Say spiritual metrics. Spiritual metrics. I'm about to pin you into it. You, you, oh, you yes. will shake your head three times. Bring I'm telling it on. you. Bring it on. So there is no way that you enter the matrix and you don't develop. There is no way that you tap into the matrix and you remain broke. Are you, are you, are you, are you listening to me? Oh yes, major. The reason why you are still broke, ah, this is the truth. It is because you have not yet tapped into the matrix. But I came this afternoon. Oh, yes. Just to push 13 people to them. Oh, yes, major. So the guy, he is a normal guy. 
He has washed in this pool. But what he did not understand is, as soon as he met Jesus, he was introduced into the matrix. And there is no way that you can be in the matrix and be poor and be broke and be sick. The devil is a liar. We are moving into another level right now where the spiritual will manipulate the physical. Because when we say the matrix, this is what we mean. If God says you are rich there, the physical will say you are poor. So when we say entering the matrix, we are saying we are living this life here, the poor one. Be seated. Because I'm not yet where I want to be. David is a sheep boy. He's neglected in the family. He's busy with the sheep. God sees a king. Until Prophet Samuel showed up, introduced some certain level of matrix in the life of the young man. And the attitude of the young man changed. He said, I've been in bushes for a long time. While I'm busy with the sheep, I'm meant to be in a palace. Listen to me. Some of you, you are meant to be somewhere right now. Some of you, you are meant to be married right now. Staying in your dream house right now. Oh, having yes. your own company. Having your... Oh, yes, Listen. Major. But because the spiritual has not yet manipulated the physical, oh, yes. you are still the way you are. But today, somebody holler today. Today. Somebody holler today. Today. We are doing some crazy metrics. Kalabaya. I receive. Now, how do you explain? I want us to, 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 okay, no, it's okay. How do you explain the children of Israel? Now, I'm talking to you now. You better listen to me. The children of Israel, are you listening to me? Oh, yes, me. They operated under God's matrix. They operated under the environment of God, where everything goes according to God. To an extent that we see Moses, he is standing by the Red Sea. And God says to Moses, Moses cries unto God. And God says, why criest thou unto me? And the Bible tells us that he lifted up his rod. As he lifted up his rod, he said, for what much? And as they were moving, the Red Sea opened. But what you don't know is, as a young preacher, I always thought, wow, what a powerful prophet. I always, wow, I always said, wow, what a powerful servant of God. Moses, how do you separate the Red Sea? Because when you read in the miracles that Moses performed, Red Sea is one of the greatest miracles that he performed. But when I studied spiritual metrics, I understood that the guy never separated any sea. I, let me leave that one for, 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 for another subject. Can I leave it for another subject? So when I ask, listen to this, he is a normal God. This is Moses. And he has performed miracles before. But the greatest miracle is when he separated the Red Sea. Lifted up his rod and the, rod and the Red Sea separated. Parted. And it created walls on the left and on the right. And the children of Israel walked on the dry ground. I said to myself, what a servant of God. What a prophet. Then I found out that Moses never separated, never departed any Red Sea. I, I thought you were ready for, for spiritual metrics. Bring it on. I, I thought you were ready for spiritual metrics. Should, should I leave this one and go somewhere else? Break it down, Major. So now, listen to this. Oh, I yes. thought the guy separated this thing. But I found out it is because the children of Israel were operating under a certain level of metrics. Now, watch this. I wanted to show you that it was not Moses who opened the Red Sea. Do for me the book of Exodus chapter 15. When you operate under the matrix, there are things that happen and you think you are the one who did them. You go to a garage, you say, I want this car. They give you the car. You thought you were the one who got the car. No. You are under a matrix. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yes, major. You stand in a house like this. Oh, yes. You say, I want this house. Oh, yes. And the owner gets fascinated, gives you the keys without even realizing that you have not paid. And the next thing you say, as I spoke to the owner, I used my wisdom. No. You were under matrix, my brother. Oh, yes. Because under spiritual metrics, we manipulate the physical system. Hey, I wish you could hear this. Bring it on. Bring it on, daddy. Let's read verse 8. 
What does it say? While you were sitting down. One, two, three. And with the blast of thy nostrils, the waters were gathered together. The flood stood upright as an heap. Uh -huh. And the depths were congealed in the heart of the sea. So now, what separated the water? One, two, three. We, we read again, verse eight. One, two, three. What separated the water? And with the blast of thy... So, the, so what separated... I wish I had people who knew God and the I Bible here. So what separated the water was not Moses' rod. So we know what separated the water here. And with the blast of thy nostrils, meaning God just went... Oh. Listen to this. So the children of Israel, after crossing, they're looking at Moses and say, Moses, you saved us. No, it was a matrix that Moses was operating under. Ay, 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 Sit down, sit down, sit down. I don't know who I'm looking for, but I'm trying to catch, I'm trying to catch somebody who's here for the word to say, I'm tired of being like this. I'm tired of being like this. I need some spiritual metrics to take place in my life. Bring it on, Major. Oh, yes, Daddy. I need some spiritual metrics. Oh, yes. To take place in my life. Oh, yes. So the children of Israel, as soon as they have crossed, they said, Oh, Moses, servant of God. They rejoiced and they began to sing praise unto God, saying, Thank you for sending Moses. And God is sitting in his throne like this, laughing, saying, It's not Moses, it's Matrix. You have entered in an environment where everything about you has changed. Everything about you is possible. They knew you like this yesterday. But when you enter the matrix, so it was not Moses that parted. You see now, you, you always grew up. You knew that Moses separated. Uh -huh, you see your problem. But the scripture tells us here that it was God who just blew using his nostrils. And the water parted. Somebody say matrix. Matrix. We are just passing by here. We are not stopping here. We are going somewhere. So as soon as they passed the Red Sea, the Bible tells us that they landed in the wilderness. This is where the message develops now. They landed in the wilderness. As they land in the wilderness, uh, I wish I had somebody here who's saying, I'm ready, Papa. I'm ready, Major. When they landed in the wilderness, the Bible says for 40 years. This is big now. I'm closing now. Hmm. Who am I here for anyway? Listen to this. Listen to this. When you enter spiritual metrics, what we are saying is, it is no longer you. Anything about you, it is no longer under your power. And things begin to happen faster. When you enter metrics, you begin to develop wisdom in business that you did not have. You begin to think, if I put this, I put this, I put that. It is no longer you. It is actually the matrix. You have entered the matrix right now. It is no longer you manipulating the system. But the spiritual matrix is manipulating the spiritual, the physical system. Where you wake up in the morning and you say, uh, I know where to go. I declare and I decree upon your life. I see that after this message, I see you are entering a certain level of matrix. I see where money won't be a problem. I see. Say I receive it. I receive. Sit down. Oh yes, major. Sit down. Bring it on, daddy. God said it is not you. You don't decide anymore if you want to be poor, if you want to be rich. You are in a matrix. And this matrix forces prosperity out of you. Pala, 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 pala. Say spiritual matrix. Spiritual matrix. Kala zovla hadele. I receive. Mm, I'm about to pray for somebody right now. Oh, yes. The book of Nehemiah, chapter 9. Just next to, you know, Ezra, they should be Nehemiah there. That's before your Esther or something. Nehemiah. Hmm. Chapter 9. Nehemiah chapter 9, verse, come on, Holy Ghost, verse 21. I 
Are we there? Wallace was sitting down. Yeah. Forty years did thou sustain them in the wilderness. Uh -uh, you're, not, you're not reading. You're not reading. You're not here. One, two, three. Yeah. Forty years did thou sustain them in the wilderness. Uh -huh. So that they lacked nothing. Their clothes were not old. And their feet swelled not. In fact, sit down. In fact, the book of Deuteronomy says, as you have delivered them, from Israel. You did not allow them only to cross the Red Sea. But after that, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Their shoes grew with them. Listen to this. You don't understand this. This is the same place where the British army went. Are ah, you listening to me? And while is they were there, the Bible tells us that they were burning. They were, in fact, no, no, that's not the Bible. History tells us that their shoes were burning and other people burned their legs. But the children of Israel, the Bible says for 40 years, are you watching? It's not me, it's the Bible. For 40 years, God sustained them. They were not really sustained by God. They were sustained by what we call spiritual matrix. I'm coming, it will make sense. When you enter spiritual matrix, it is impossible to lack. Oh, me, listen John. to this. Bring it on. Can I have the 13 people? Just 13 people. Oh, yes, me, 13, 13. I don't want 100 people. Just 13 people who are oh, saying, yes. Apostle, we have seen your God working. We have seen wonders. We have seen miracles. Oh, yes. And we are here and we are ready to tap in, in the spiritual matrix. Oh, yes, me, sit down. Sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down. Put the verse again. Yeah, 40 years, this thou sustain them in the wilderness. This is the same wilderness where people die. This is the same wilderness where people burn. But when the children of Israel tapped in the wilderness, and listen to this, they did not tap for 40 minutes. They did not tap for 40 minutes. They did not tap for four months or four years. But the Bible says for 40 years. Sit down, sit down. Some of you, you are not 40 yet. But listen to this. Imagine for 40 years, your shoes that you are wearing are the same shoes you were wearing 40 years ago. Uh, let me talk to these people. Maybe they will hear me. Be seated, be seated, be seated. I'm coming. Maybe you will hear me. The Bible tells us, church here, that these are the same shoes that these people were wearing when they left Egypt. There were no shops at that time. There was no Ket Gag. There was no uh, Yo Yo Milani. There was no Gucci. There was no Louis Vuitton at that time. They left Egypt with the same shoes. And for 40 years, they never changed a shoe. Meaning the shoes were even growing with them. Listen to this. As the shoes were growing with them, if listen to this. Imagine I'm taking MJ because other people at that time, they had kids. Are you listening to me? So the kids were young. Even Joshua grew up in the wilderness. And, and, and imagine I take MJ that day and MJ is wearing let's say size one. And two years down the line he's size two. His shoes when I look at them, they fit somebody of size two. Now he's size five. He does not change the shoes. The shoes they grow with him. Pala, 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 pala. Sit down. Break it down, Major. Sit down. Rich major this is another level of what we call spiritual matrix. Oh, yes. When you tap in into this world, oh, yes. it's an environment which something develops. Oh, yes. Even your shoes, even your clothes, they begin to develop. Oh, yes. Your bank account. I, oh, yes. Yeah. Bring it on. Bring it I on. said your bank account. Oh, yes. It is always so negative. Oh, yes. But when you do some tapping in the metrics, oh, yes. your bank account now. Oh, yes. Sit down, sit down, sit down. You might not have millions, but every time you look at your bank account, there is something. Oh, yes. And you wonder, but how am I surviving? How, 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 oh, how? Yes, Spiritual matrix. Matrix. Bring and it not on. just if you may church. It is not only their shoes. Put it back there. It is not only their shoes. But the Bible says, listen to this, sustain them in the wilderness so that they lacked nothing. In the wilderness, there is no shop. In the wilderness, you can't plant anything. There, there was no one there who was doing farming. What were they eating for 40 years? You two years, you are crying. There is not, hey, you, are, you are stressed. You, you are depressed. 
in, in just two days. You need the matrix. You know, there are a lot of people who meet me and say, what happened in your life? Why? Because they knew me back then. But I've entered the matrix. Oh, yes. Spiritual matrix. Oh, yes. And when they see me now, they say, what happened to you? What, what, what really took place? Listen to me. When I made angel, angel is a matrix. When I met the guy, when I met the guy, listen to this, I'm coming. When I met the guy, you, 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 you can meet one person, listen to this. You can meet one person and your life don't change. And the same person again, if you approach them differently, your life can change. Oh, yes. What you don't know is, here in new life, we are operating under the matrix. I will show you. Just like the children of Israel, they were operating under the matrix. They have the matrix of God around them up to this day. Remember, the Bible says, I'm trying to, you know, just show you a lot of stuff so that I can back up what I'm saying. The Bible says, when they were coming out, after coming out, there is a man called Balaam. How many of you remember Balaam in the Bible? And Balaam is a prophet, he's an oracle. And he actually, he's the man who called himself oracle. Nobody called him an oracle. He said, I'm an oracle of God. And he says, whatever I speak, it comes to pass. And, and, and the Bible says, before he prophesied every time, the guy will take a poem. And he will begin to read the poem. And he, as he read the poem, he says, I, Balaam, I see and I hear. I pray light prostrate. When I speak, heaven trembles. When I read that thing, I was sometimes like, this guy had pride. This one, nonsense. So it, the Bible says, as soon as he has said his poem, the spirit will come upon him. And the Bible says, whatever he said, it came to pass. And now the king of Syria paid Balaam and said, Balaam, I hear there are children of Israel who are trying to invade our nation. Go and curse them. Let them die. And Balaam, because everything that he said came to pass, he went, stood on the mountain, took a rod, looked at the children of Israel like this. And, and he began to say his poem and something came upon him. And as he was cursing, the Bible says that his rod fell down. And he wondered why. When he looked, he saw Moses. Listen to this. Moses did not see him. Ah, you are not catching it. You are not catching it. He saw Moses. Sit down, sit down, sit down. He saw Moses when he looked. And then he went back to the king. He said, Moses is amongst them. They are uncursable. Oh, you yes. can curse them. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, mate. Sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down. Bring it on. Bring it on. Why? Because Moses was operating under the matrix. To an extent that oh, even the people who were under him were uncursable. If Moses could not be poor, the people around him could not be poor. Ah. Oh, yes. yeah. May you tap in into the spiritual matrix. I I if I, your father, cannot be poor, oh, yes. I declare and I decree I by the authority of the Holy Ghost I that you can be poor under this matrix. I Say, I receive it. I receive it. Sit up. Oh, yes, Major. Bring it on. Daddy. The matrix. You, you know, you know when, when you enter the matrix, it's beyond your ability. You know why you're thinking how, how, how it's impossible? How can it be? It's because you are thinking at your mental capacity level. But the matrix nullifies the natural. It is a spiritual system that manipulates the physical system. Oh, yes. Bring it on. Bring it on. So for 40 years, for 40 years, the Bible says they elect nothing. You know the word no nothing is what? Nothing. Meaning they had so much abundance around them. It was so much. They, were, they, they had so much. There was so much abundance in the system. In the matrix. That I, I believe they were hitting each other with bread. There was so much spoiled under the matrix. That even when God gave them bread, they said, what is this? And they called it manna. Manna means what is this? So meaning when they took hold of the bread, one took a bite. What is this? So the what is this is manna. It's not that they were eating manna; they were eating bread. But as they were eating, when he took a bite, what is this? This is what I'm saying. It was bread, but when it rained, listen to this. If somebody on the corner 
their favorite meal was steak and potato. And somebody on the other corner, their favorite meal was sushi. And somebody at the back, their favorite meal was actually a, a, a lasagna. When they took the same breads, depending on their appetite, oh, yes. depending on what they wanted at that oh, time. Yes. Oh yes, Major. Bread it top. looked like bread, but when he took a bite, he's oh, yes. testing this is lasagna. What is this? this. What is this? Oh la, yes, la, Major. La, 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 la. Sit down, sit down, sit down. Bring you, it on. You are really not catching it, right? Bring it on. You are really not catching it, right? Uh, uh, you people here, you people here. You are, you are catching it, right? You are my people, I know. Listen to this. How do you explain such? They said, what is this? Not because they could not see this bread. It is because when they tested it, one said, I was just craving a steak and potato. These things. Oh, yes. And the Bible says, there was no one who, could, who was allowed to eat the leftovers. Meaning each day God supplied something new. It became a commandment to say you are not allowed to eat bread from yesterday. Oh, yes. I prophesy and I prophesy. I no see. leftovers here. I see. Oh, yes, say I be as 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 Oh yes, Major. Bring Listen it to me. on. They can know you as a mere man. Oh yes. As a mere girl. Oh yes. As a mere woman. Oh yes. They know your mother. They know your father. Oh, they yes. know your sisters. They know your brother. They know your family. But listen to me. When you tap into the metrics now, oh yes. They will say, "Is this not the same lady that we know?" Oh yes. Is this not the same guy from this family? Oh yes. Sit down. And guess what they will say? Others will say it's him. Some of it's her. So it looks like her. But I hear you saying, I am he. Oh. I am he. Oh, yes. Why? Because you have entered what? Spiritual matrix. Bring it down. Oh, yes, daddy. Matrix. It's an environment where something develops. Meaning nothing enters matrix and remains the same. Now, let me show you something. When God said, Israel, it's my chosen nation, what God did was, he placed a certain matrix among them. That's why those people are unkillable. How many people wanted to take Israel away from the Jews? And what you don't know is in the world, right? We are, we are, we are over 7 billion, right? Over 7 billion billion. But Israel, in fact, let's say the Jews, let's not talk about Israel. The Jews in the whole world are not more than 15 million. Just think about it. Just let it sink so that you do mathematics. We are 7 billion, over 7 billion. The Jews, whom God is like, this is <laughs> my chosen, uh, okay, okay, let me not say that. My chosen generation. These are my people. They are just 15 million. Over 7 billion. But what you don't know is, Jews, they own 78% of the world, of the wealth of the world. Uh, I'm going to repeat what I just said, because some of you, you know, numbers, they're not good. Jews, the chosen generation in the world now, they are, over, they are just 15 million, over 15 million. And us, the whole world, we are 7 billion plus. Yet the 15 million group of people in Israel, they are running 80, 78 to 80 percent of the wealth of the whole world. They are controlling the wealth of the whole world. Just 15 million people controlling the wealth of over 7 billion people. You know why? It is because they are operating under a certain matrix. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah,
when you come to new life, what you don't know, mama, is you might be sitting there uh, wondering, I'm just here to church. I'm just here for John 1.1. 1, 1. In the beginning was the word. But when you come in here, you are tapping into another matrix. Oh, yes. <laughs> And we begin to teach you stuff that you didn't hear anywhere. You begin to wonder what's going on. We are just pushing you into the matrix. Yes. <laughs> there is a matrix. You see me, everything that I have, everything that I am, I'm operating under the matrix of new life. If I have a house, oh, yes. of, which, of which I know I have, if I have a house, it simply tells you that the matrix of new life gave me a house. And you yourself, you are in new life. Uh, yes. Meaning your house is available in this matrix. I receive. I receive. If I'm driving and I have a child and I'm happy. Oh, yes. Meaning there is happiness in this church. Uh, yes. I prophesy upon somebody here. I receive. I receive. Two months from now, I receive. you'll be staying in your own house. I driving your own car. Having your own job, your company, your business. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive it. Oh, yes, Major. Listen. Bring it on, Daddy. I'm closing now. Your boss will look at you like this oh, and yes. say, I feel you need promotion. I don't know. Oh, yes, Major. You, you don't have experience, but I feel, I feel, I feel. I receive. Oh, yes. Bring it on. McDonald will call you and say, Are you not looking for a franchise? Oh, yes. Steers will call you and say, are you not looking for a franchise? I oh, yes, Major. I speak a spiritual matrix. I receive. 